Okay, let's go ahead and start. All right, so we're going to start with a networking problem in which we're given a graph and we have weights on the edges. And I'm suggesting, for example, that these are eight regional data centers. They're labeled with the, the vertices are labeled with the numbers one through eight. But certain pairs of vertices are connected with edges, and those edges have numbers on them. And so the idea is that we need to be, have these data centers to, to be able to communicate with each other. But communications can be done by relay. So if, you can, if A can talk to B and B can talk to C, then A can talk to C. So it's not necessary for every pair of data centers to have a direct link. But feasibility studies have been done, and these are the candidate edges, the links that can be built, and the cost, say in millions of dollars, is reflected here. You know, to make this a, a, an interesting problem, you should have 50, 60, 70 vertices at a, at a minimum, but 50,000 or 500,000 makes it even more challenging. So you're given a bunch of vertices, and on some of the pairs, you have candidate edges. And the challenge is to connect everybody, allow co full communication, and yet keep the total cost as small as possible. So you, as the data person in your organization, says to the CEO, these are the links that you should build. Now, here's a particular solution. So you come in to the CEO and say, build those links, and everybody will be able to talk to everybody, and the cost in millions of dollars is $427 million. That's a big project. You better be right in your selection of edges. So <clears throat> when you're doing optimization problems, it is sometimes the case that you need to make sacrifices locally or temporarily in order to achieve a better global or long-term optimum. Think back to first-year calculus when you're trying to find the maximum value of some function over an interval. So you have a closed interval and you have a continuous function and that function might go like this. There might be many local maxes. So if you are traveling along the curve and you're here, you might see a nearby point where it looks very good. It's a local max. But the global max is over here. And in order to get there, you have to be willing to take a hit and diminish your expectations and go down into the valley. And then later, you will recover the sacrifice and get to the true optimum, which is over at some other location. Now, we're going to study some algorithms that do not have that flavor. They will have the flavor that at any moment you will have a solution and that solution, over time, will only improve. You will never sacrifice. So it's got to have some very special conditions in order for this greedy approach to work. OK, so the main point for you to see right now is that if you're given a graph with weights on the edges and you're asked to find the subgraph, which allows full communication between any two vertices, that solution will be a spanning tree. It will be a subgraph, which is a tree. It will have no cycles in it. And all vertices will be incident with that edges in the tree. Will be a spanning it's a pretty obvious statement. So mathematically, the problem is just simply Given a connected graph 
with non-negative weights on the edges, find a minimum weight spanning tree. And what does that mean? Find a spanning tree for which the sum of the weights on the edges is as small as possible. Well, this is applied combinatorics. We talk about finite sets. Our emphasis is overwhelmingly on the finite world. And since this is just a graph with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight vertices, and at most eight choose two, what's eight choose two? Eight times seven over two, 28 edges. Why don't you just take them all? And take all the spanning trees and one by one see what their, some of their weights on their edges is and just take the best one. Well, by this point in time in this course, you should be leery that taking all of anything is perhaps not a good idea. And if you have a graph with 75 vertices, now 75 is not a big number. But if you take all the possible spanning trees, the number of spanning trees in a graph on n vertices, if you have all edges present, is n to the n minus 2. So for 75, the number of spanning trees is that number that takes three lines to write. That's 75 to the 73rd power. And there's no computer on the planet that will do that many things. There's none envisioned. And replace the 75 by 7,000 or 700,000, and you can imagine what happens to the size of this number. So we need a much better approach. And we're going to study two of them.